Welcome to Wolf Sound. Today's episode is on emotional abuse. Who said those who do you harm or think you harm sleep well at night? Darling, they don't sleep. They pass out. And in their comatose state, they build homes for cancers waiting to confront them at an optimum time for redemption. Just be sure never to harbor neither joy nor pity. They, of all people, deserve your forgiveness, but not your attention. All, all abuse is emotional abuse, whether it's verbal, physical, sexual, mental, financial, or spiritual. Our emotions take a serious hit. It usually goes unnoticed. It is a favorite method among narcissists because there's little to no evidence pointing against them. In fact, it points to the victim as they are methodically driven to psychotic breaks. It's hard to comprehend why we still have to explain the complexity of abusive relationships to those who judge the victim for it. There are so many factors involved that it's near impossible to just leave. No one enjoys being abused. There is what is familiar and what is unfamiliar, and the distance to healing can be filled with traps, detours, and learning curves. You can help them cover half this distance by refraining from making it tougher on them to come forward. The abuse ruse. Here is a quote. The man reeks of mental illness. I can taste his pathology. Goes well with my palate. It is gradual and it is skillful. When the victim finds the courage to escape, the world often echoes back what the predator was saying all along. The world is cold, judgmental, and dangerous. No one will love and protect you like I do. The victim goes out in the world and finds it to be true in many instances, unfortunately. Abusers don't look or act like abusers early in the relationship. They come as knights in shining armor, who makes her feel special by sharing his vulnerabilities. Oxytocin, the love and trust hormone, is released. This natural chemical is the reason for the intensity of her emotions for him and the illusion of trust she gets trapped by. He plays her mind against her on a chemical molecular level, which turns her into his addict. No one understands what is happening to her and neither does he. But the way the world responds to her only intensifies her addiction to her abuser because others make her feel judged, belittled and alone. He becomes her only refuge, and this is how he reels her in. Where do you run to when your only savior is your very perpetrator? Now, the genders are interchangeable. It just so happens that in this piece, the predator is a he and the victim is a she. You can switch that around because men are victims as well. Psychopathic, narcissistic, and sociopathic abuse. Charm turns to intimidation. Interest turns into manipulation. Love bombing turns into isolation. Protectiveness turns into control. Compliments turns into verbal abuse. Passion turns into rage. Vulnerability turns into neglect. Idealization turns into devaluation and defamation. Friends turn into flying monkeys. There is a manufactured intensity. They create intensity by making everything urgent and rushed. They rush to get physical, move the relationship faster, get married, sharing your bank account, getting your passwords, and urge you to tell them everything about you and your family. You think it's intense and intimate, but it's not. What they're really doing is confusing and grooming you to later use you up and destroy you. Here's the modus operandi of a love fraud. Love bombing. If you think it's too good to be true, investigate it and you will know. Slow down, observe, wait for evidence. 
In the beginning, narcissists will crash into your life, shower you with attention, compliments, gifts, and promises to make all your dreams come true. He wants to put your relationship in high gear, claiming you are the one. Love bombing is used by bosses who are looking to exploit their employees and by a new acquaintance who levels level jumps the friendship to gain favors. They may be a flying monkey of the narcissist who helps spy on you. Gaslighting. Once they push you into insanity, your life becomes fair game. This is methodical and premeditated crazy making behavior. As depicted in the film Gaslit, sorry, Gaslight, a narcissist would dim a, a gaslight gradually, then light it up again. When his wife would ask why the light dimmed, he would tell her she's imagining things. They make you question what you see and hear. They have no problem denying doing what they're doing right before your eyes, and their audacious denial makes you question your sanity. You lose trust in your senses because he's your only link to reality. Gaslighting occurs after you're successfully isolated from your support network. He tells you what is real and what is not. The more you think you're insane, the more of a recluse you become and the more vulnerable to further gaslighting. You don't find anyone else to affirm you. This is done gradually with little things, and before you know it, you're completely insane. He can now control and get away with everything with ease and not worry about you witnessing any of it. Isolation and exclusion. Show me the distance between your wound and your skin. This happens early in the relationship. First, the love bombing will keep you busy as you spend most of your time together in a honeymoon phase. As you spend less and less time with friends, he consumes more and more of your time and attention. Your friends and family may feel left out. When they complain or get bitter, you will make the mistake of sharing your stress with your new lover. This is the opportunity he has been waiting for, to demonize those closest to you and justify isolating you from your support network. He won't say directly, of course. He may defend them and tell you to be more patient with them. He is a talented predator. Later down the line, he will hint how they must be jealous of you and make you reach false conclusions about your loved ones. He will drain you and upset you, so they too decide to stay away from you. When they do, you start to think he was right about them. Once you're isolated because your friends don't know how to be around you anymore, he will then exclude you from his own activities. He can finally keep you isolated without having to be present. Reactive abuse, dog whistling. It is the most brutal of crimes when all evidence points to the victim as the prime suspect due to their reaction to the pain they were subjected to. Dog whistling is when the narcissist says something covertly hurtful that only you understand to make you appear crazy, oversensitive, sad for no apparent reason, and people find you depressing. They use this tactic especially when you're having a good time being this life of the party and laughing from your heart. Narcissists do not like it when you laugh and certainly don't want you to impress anyone with your intelligence, wit, and humor. They will instigate a fight, sometimes before going out, as a preemptive strike. Dog whistling is used to get you to react. They may invite you out just to bully you. They make you appear as the abusive one so the people believe the lies he will tell about you later. People may wonder what you do behind closed doors if this is how you behave in public. Lacking insight, your social circle is drafted to be his soldiers. They are the blind-sighted flying monkeys. Dog whistling doesn't have to be something whispered. A narcissist can take jabs at you in front of others. But they do so in a seemingly light-hearted manner, making you the butt of their jokes. When you do get upset, you will be accused of being overly sensitive. They didn't mean it that way, they say. Can't you take a joke? 
triangulation. They will flaunt their new supply and idealize everyone else but you because it is you that they want to keep. Anyone who dated a narcissist will know all about triangulations. They compare you to others in a negative way, making you feel less than, and that you will never be as beautiful, intelligent, or worthy of love as their ex or new love interest. They flaunt their new love in front of you to further break you. Other narcissists in your life, such as friends or family members, use triangulations differently. They pit people against each other and single you out at the, as the odd one. You're excluded from gatherings and deliberately not informed about important developments that concern you. In a job environment, your boss brings in someone barely qualified to gradually take your place. The new person is introduced as your new assistant, but shortly after, you're not invited into meetings relevant to your project. If you confront a narcissist about triangulations, they will either deny it altogether or accuse you of being aggressive, even if you're not. Next thing you know, you're completely cut off. As painful as it can be, don't engage in such infantile behaviors. Cut your losses and move on. The narcissist cannot care about anyone, including the new supply. Time will expose them without your effort to get justice. Stonewalling and silent treatment. Stonewalling and the silent treatment are favorite methods of the narcissist to bring you down to your knees, begging for them to acknowledge your existence. Ghosting is, is when they disappear on you. Stonewalling is when you're in the same room, but they act as though you don't exist. You try to talk to them, but they manage to look through you. At times, they give you the dead stare and intimidate you before you say what you want to say. It can be something as simple as asking them how something works or if they want to eat. Stonewalling is an abuse tactic that is often unprovoked. It's only to keep you on your toes. The narcissist is easily insulted. If you outshine them in some way or disagreed about something frivolous, such as not liking the same food they like, they decide to punish you. Stonewalling, done publicly, they exclude you from a conversation. They joke and flirt with and compliment everyone else but you. They do not address you at all. If you join in the laughter or conversation, they make sure not to laugh, often frown whenever you speak, and when you finally notice, you go silent to figure out what's going on. The silent treatment is not always silent. It is giving you short and sporadic answers, claiming things are okay when they're clearly not, and not involving you or initiating any conversation with you. All of the above are passive aggressive methods. It's a psychological sleight of hand, if you will. Passive aggression. If someone is too spineless to say no to your face, they cannot be trusted with anything else in your life. This includes agreeing to help you when they have no intention to. They waste your time knowingly and then play dumb, claim they forgot, or pretend to be angry or busy so you don't ask them for anything, not even an explanation. It can manifest itself as deliberate poor performance so that you have to redo the entire task and not bother asking them for their input in the future. It can range from washing their own plate, working on a presentation to meet a deadline, or picking up the kids from school. They talk to everyone about you, but not to you, and talk to you about everyone else. They create rifts between people so that they can control everyone in their circle and become the one everyone else confides in. Devaluation. Your value is, is by what you have to offer and what no one can take away from you. Your value is by what you have to offer and what no one can take away from you. When you know your inherent value, no one else can devalue you. Those who de devalue you are showing you what they lack within themselves. This is what abusers do. When you remove yourself from the equation and listen to what they're saying as confessions, as confessions about themselves, 
It will be the most honest account you can receive if you're willing to receive it. Do so with grace. When you truly value who you are, you will not feel the need to throw it in their face, nor will you accept it. When someone offers you a pill filled with poison, you do not have to take it off their hands and swallow it. This is their story. You are not asked to make it your own. The lack of self-love and sense of self-worth are at the core of every poor decision we make. It is by far the most important sense we need to develop early. Children know their worth by how you treat them and not what you say to them. Instill love and worth even through challenging times. It can save their life. When someone wants to bring you down, it means they perceive you as above them. They want to take away the things they see in you that you have not yet seen in yourself. <laughs> Intermittent reinforcement, benching. Inconsistency creates addiction. In and out, hot and cold, something is not working right with that faucet. Scarcity breeds addiction, and they use it to get attention. Unhealthy people know that should they be available, their mask will slip. It rests heavily on their face, and they need to put it down away from you. Someone made them believe their real face is unlovable. So they refine themselves a mask. They put you on the bench to guarantee they won't lose you. And should they get comfortable enough to show you who they are, they will show you what they believe about themselves. When someone is playing games, don't play. When they can't decide what they want, make the decision for them. Listen to the early red flags, and if you do see one and dismiss it, ask yourself why it wasn't red enough for you. One person's red flag is another person's comfort zone. Is it your comfort zone? And go and figure out why. Discarding. A narcissist never discards you, unless you want to see it that way. Whether you're aware of it or not, you always initiate the discard by ceasing to give them supply or you no longer fall for their bullshit. There is nothing to be proud of being the primary narcissistic supply. Ask yourself what you think you deserve, and if this is not it, then ask why you're sacrificing this much for something that is not for you. Withholding affection. Narcissists use affection as a means to an end, and the end is always control. Somatic narcissists are preoccupied with physical contact as their main source of supply. It makes them feel desired. Withholding affection is a way to make you feel undesirable. It's used as punishment. They may spend months not, as, not so much as holding your hand. They sit at a distance and act disgusted if you try to hug them or pat them on the back when they act upset. They treat you as though you're contagious, you're a contagious disease. They resent you for offering any form of intimacy, no matter how innocent. But if you reject them, they become aggressive. They rape their spouses to them to let them know they cannot be rejected and often do so to humiliate and inflict pain. Spousal rape is the worst of its kind because no one wants to acknowledge it. They ignore your boundaries, blackmail you, and find ways to prove they own you. They often threaten to cheat and flaunt new partners in front of you just to watch you break. It makes them feel valuable and powerful. Never offer a narcissist intimacy. Anyone showcasing abusive behavior only gets worse with time. Cut your losses sooner rather than later. Hoovering. Narcissists love to come back. It's like they think life is a revolving door with an open buffet made just for them. They miss the supply and your particular recipe. The main reason they disappear is not necessarily that they met someone else. It's often around the time you saw through them, and so they must disappear so you can't hold them accountable. 
Depending on the nature of the incident, they will calculate how long they need to disappear before you stop caring about the issue. Your need for them to return to you overpowers your need to blame them for their abuse. At the beginning of a relationship, they do the disappearing act as a scarcity tactic. By the time they reappear, you're just glad they're here, which makes you more likely to adhere to their timetable and oblige their immediate requests. We all know that new person who makes plans but rarely follows through. They send a minimal text with the least amount of effort and expect you to be at their beck and call. The scarcity tactic is passing on their urgency to you. I'll be traveling tomorrow for a couple of weeks, so let's meet tonight. They may or may not be traveling, but if they are, you can be sure you won't hear from them when they return, unless they can get away with stringing you along in a casual relationship. Don't take the bait. You can waste the best years of your life with someone offering you nothing but crumbs. The methods, the methods they use to hoover vary. The overt type will make grand gestures, tell you all you want to hear, do all the things you asked for before, and may even propose. Please say no. If they are covert, they may use a third party to get to you in a staged coincidence. They may have a flying monkey casually tell you that narcissist is sick or had an accident, so you can break no contact first. The covert type does not do anything directly. They are not nearly as audacious as the as the overt type, but a lot more sneaky. Some people feel rejected when the narcissist does not hoover. However, it only means the jig is up and you finally began to recognize your self-worth. It's a positive sign when a narcissist wouldn't dare return to abuse you again. Spiritual Psychic Attacks When all else fails, just poison them with doubt. That's the philosophy of the narcissist. Draining someone of their life force, using religion and spirituality to control and ridicule are ancient effective tactics. When people respond to you from a religious point of view, it makes you reluctant to, to respond. In fear of being shamed and accused of lack of faith, people drop the debate. Using black magic or hinting that they would is enough to make you sick. It's a scare tactic that works. Their energy is powerful, and they know that all they need to do is instill doubt. Dismissing demeaning words such as devaluation, hoovering, and discarding is a good start to respect ourselves. You are not an object to be evaluated, a doormat to be hoovered, or trash to be discarded. No contact. The only effective solution for saving yourself from these human snakes and hyenas is to go completely no contact and clean up your own wounds. If there is an original narcissist in your life, like a parent, you need to tend to the wound they left you with so you don't continue to attract narcissists and sociopaths. If not, then look at whatever is not healed within you. If you raise your vibration, you will not be necessarily vulnerable to predators. Still, some of the healthiest people can fall victim to those without, con without a conscience because they see the best in everyone. They believe people are inherently good and are, are unable to comprehend the depths of human evil. Take your time and let people show you who they truly are. Self-protection is paramount. Abusive partners and friends are branches that will naturally fall away when you get to the root of the tree that is making you sick. No contact is not the same as the silent treatment. It is self-preservation, not done with the intention to hurt the other person. Remove yourself from toxic situations and protect your privacy at all costs. What lies beneath your shadow that's giving birth to your fears? That's a good question to ask so you can start to heal. Thank you and see you in the next episode. Thank you.